it. So let's talk about it. So I'm going to share my screen. Diana, give me the thumbs up. Do you see that? All right, excellent. So at the moment now, I can't see the chat. So anything that comes in, Diana, that you want me to answer, that, that, um, that either of the two of them ask, let me know. Um, interrupt me. Um, OK, so what we've got here, is, I'm going to assume you both knew how to log in and create your account. And had you done that, you would have landed here. Now, um, on a trial account, you only have one property guide in, in your, your TouchDay account. In this one that I'm demo, demoing to you, there are two. If you've got more than one, which you both have, once you're happy with, you, with, with your one and you've done the trial and you want to extend, you simply go to your, your account up here and there will be an activation button. And that will allow you to activate your subscription for your first one. And if you then want to add more, you can add more. You don't have to add, for example, in your, your case, Norton, you wouldn't have to add your 12 camper vans immediately. You could add your second, pay for your second, get that done, add your third. You, you, know, you could do it incrementally. And for both of you to know, in case you didn't, the first guide is full price, but the ones you add after that tear down heavily in price. So you can, um, you can easily have a look at that going to touchday.com and clicking on pricing at the top of the page. Okay, now that's out of the way. The first page you land once you, you've created your account and indeed when you log in subsequently is this all guides page right here. So I've got two in my account. And both of those have a preview guide button here. And that allows you at any point in time to see what your guide looks like. And although it says preview guide, it's actually the real live guide that your guest will see. So when you're, when you're working in your account, I would definitely suggest that you have this open in another window or even better on another window and on your phone. And then each time you make any changes, you could just refresh both the window you've got open on your desktop and the refresh your mobile and you'll see those changes live that gives you a good sense of how things will look to your guest on different devices so let's do that let's go ahead and click the preview guide button so this will load beach retreat which is our standard demo guidebook which you'll find on the home page of the website um, first thing to say is this assumes it's a a, um, a host called Jane Cartwright with her face there. Um, it, Norton, in your case, where you've got a business and you've got a fleet of uh, vans and you've, you've probably got a logo, you could put your logo there instead. And you don't have to write Jane Cartwright underneath here or with your name, you could have that empty or you could write in there, welcome to wherever it is, in this case, Cape Town, welcome to Cape Town. Or you could have empty. And if you didn't have anything in there at all, the phone number and the email just shift up to fill the space. Your phone number and your email are here. And where you've got more than one guide, which you both have, that phone number and that email will appear by default on all of your future ones. Um, so you won't need to kind of re-enter that. Um, if you did want a different number and an email address, depending on the particular guide your guest was accessing, you can change that at the individual guide level. Then you have your guide name, the address, and a get started button. And you'll see in the background here what we call the cover photo. Hold that thought, I'll show you the cover photo in a second. The color scheme you see here is completely um, configurable. We start you off with the, the dark blue in the bottom and the teal button. That can be changed. Again, I'll show you how to do that. Um, when you click on the address, it takes you to the map where you'll see your home or indeed your location of your camper van. And from there, your guest can hit get directions and it will open up Google Maps where it shows them where the location is and they can punch in their starting location. It's nothing more or less than Google Maps. If I X out that box, you'll see the map fills with a bunch of other pins. Those pins are not automatically added by TouchDay. These are ones that you decide to add. So for example, if you wanted to add a restaurant nearby, here's a restaurant. Up here is a grocery cart, so this is a grocery store. Here's a flag because it's a golf course. Here's a coffee shop. Here's a beach. So you'll see each of them has a slightly different logo in size, signifying what they are. You can also, or your guests can also tap at the bottom to filter those places by type that they're interested in. So if I was only interested in restaurants because I had a long day and I wanted to see where I wanted to eat, I could just click restaurants and it will filter the map so only restaurants are showing. And I might think, well, it's been a long day, so actually I don't want to look at that one all the way down the bottom here. I want to look at this one nearer to the home. So I simply zoom into where it is. I see where it is. I can click this one 
and it says it's the lighthouse pub and grill. I can get directions that will do exactly what I did just now with the home, or I can click read more and read more takes me into the guide where the lighthouse pub and grill is. The information on the page here, with the exception of this text, everything else, so the photos, the address, the phone number, the reviews, the, the, the map pin and the website address, they are all coming from our integration with Google. So we li literally look up the Google Place on Google and we pull in that information for you. You then have the ability to supplement that listing with your own information if you would like to add your own information. And again, I'm going to show you how to do all of that. So that's the map. Um, let's go back to the cover. If we click get started, we jump into the guide itself. And you have table of contents down the left hand side here. And again, this is why I would encourage you when you're looking at this to also look at it on your phone at the same time, because you'll see, although it looks and feels very similar, the layout is different because we can't have this kind of layout on a mobile phone. So you'll see it slightly differently. And then the guest simply navigates by tapping any of these things, and you'll see it reveals what we call subcategories. We call this main level a category, and then you have a bunch of subcategories underneath. And then if I click on any of the subcategories, I get the third level of information on the right-hand side here. And you'll see in some sections, uh, let's see if we can find one for you. Let's maybe go down to the arrival information. So you'll see in some sections like this, I've got a driving directions followed by parking. You can see there are two separate cards. And that is um, limitless. So you can have as many cards as you want, as many topic cards as you want, as many categories as you want on the page, these main ones, and as many subcategories as you want. There are no limits. You'll start off with a template, but you can literally add, delete, edit that template till your heart's content. There's no, there's no limits at all. Right. I've covered the guest view and I've covered an orientation. I always do that first because when we jump into the platform, it's more obvious what you're looking at in the platform and how it relates to what you're seeing in the guest guide here. So if I jump back to the guides, go to Content Hub. This is where you manage all of the content in your account. Regardless of whether you've got one or 13 or 300 guides, you start here. And think of Content Hub as your, your kind of one-stop shop, your starting point to add, edit, remove all of your content. So the first thing to say is on the left-hand side here, you see all of these categories. They correspond exactly to what you see going on here. And if I was to move any of these, so let's say I didn't like COVID-19 to be here. Uh, maybe it's less of a priority for me now and I want COVID-19 to be further down the page. There are six dots next to this. I literally grab those six dots and I drop it wherever I want. So I might take it right to the end. And you'll see now it's at the end there. If I now go and refresh my guide, the COVID-19 section will move to the end. Of course it didn't. <laughs> Let's refresh again. Let's try that again. Now you see it's moved all the way to the end. So that's a way that you can move your content around. So you don't have to stay with the order in which the template starts you off with. That process of moving stuff around exists at this subcategory level as well. So I could, again, I could drag these six dots wherever I wanted and move that information into a different spot. And that uh, same functionality exists at the individual topic level, which is the next level down. So if I go here, and let's expand a few to make it uh, a bit more obvious. <clears throat> so in this case here, we've got grocery options and baby equipment under here. I could, if I wanted to grab the, the six dots and move it somewhere else. So you can see it's all very configurable, all very easy to move stuff around. Now, if you want to create a new category, which is this main level here, you've got two options to do it, add category at the top or your add category at the bottom. Doesn't matter which one you go for. If I click it, it gives me a list of categories that are in our database that haven't yet been added into the guide. So we, we tried to, to give you a few options to use. 
Or if you don't see the one you want here, you want to add something else in, you click your own category, you simply give it a name. So I'm not feeling terribly imaginative today, so I'm going to call this test category. Um, when you add a category, you have to choose an icon. So if I go back to the guest view, that's what this icon here on the left is of each category title. And you'll notice that icons are only at the category level. So I don't see them at the subcategory level, and nor do I see it next to the topic heading here. It's only at this main category level. So that's why when you add a category, it asks you for a choice of icon. There are about 90. Doesn't look like it, but there are. And we found that those cover most scenarios. If you don't see an icon that you really, really, really want, just let us know. And from time to time, we are adding to those. So in my test one, um, let's go ahead and use the, the love heart. And we'd hit submit. And that would then drop that there on the page. And then like I did before, I could grab the six dots and move it somewhere else if I wanted to. Now I'm gonna come back to the test category in a second, but what I want to show you is an existing set of subcategories. So here in arrival information, I've got three, one, two, three. And just a reminder, if I go back to the arrival information here, I've got one, two, three. Um, if I click on any of those, like we did before, the topics will load. Unfortunately, the site is really, really slow, I've noticed this afternoon. It, it obviously realized that I was about to do a demo and decided to, to go slow. It's always the way. Um, but what, in fact, what I'm going to, well, there we go, they, they've appeared. So what you've got underneath the subcategories are these two topics here. And if I flip back to my guest view, driving directions here and parking here. So that's what we're looking at. If I wanted to add a third topic to this list, I just click the add topic button. And again, you get a bunch of things that are in our database. Or if you didn't want any of those, just click your own topic, give it a name. Um, now you've got a test, a text box here where you can add any text you want. So your let, let's actually make this a bit more real. So let's say, um, you know, let's call this off street parking. So on here, I'm going to say, you know, what the off-street parking requirements are. I say whatever I want. Um, if you need to um, bullet things, let's add a few more things here so you can see what we're doing. If you want to bullet things, you can just click the bullet and it will bullet it. And then I can hit the next one. I could change those to numbers if I wanted to. If there's some extra emphasis you want to give to something, you could bold it or italics or underline. If there was um, uh, you know, and let's do watch out, um, you know, there are bears around. Um, what I could do, I could do on the watch out, I could make it really large, or I could make it slightly smaller, or I could click it again and it would be the original text. If I didn't like making it larger or smaller, but I still wanted to give extra emphasis to it, I can choose a different color to use. So I could make the, the text color red, for example, uh, which is like that. Or I can then highlight that and actually give it red and a yellow background, so it's like that. So you can configure the text colors too. Um, you can link to stuff. So say if you if you had said here there are bears around, um, please refer to this bear safety website. You could click uh, and please re please refer to. So you could do you could highlight it, and what you want to happen is when the guest clicks that area, it takes them off to that website. So that's called creating a hyperlink. So I could then insert a link. I could put whatever website it is. Hit save. Touch day will just turn it into the correct prefix, and that's now a clickable link on the page. When I click that as a guest, it will take me off to the bear safety website. One of the other things you can do is you can internally link. So what you could do is you could say, um, yeah, please, I've still got the formatting applied there. So what we can do, there's a little break formatting option here. This, see this one here, this clear formatting? If I do that, it removes the formatting from here. So um, you could say, please look at the dining guide. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to link the guests to our dining guide. So instead of saying to them, go back to the menu, look for our restaurant recommendations, instead you're just going to link them to it. So please look at the dining guide. That's this internal link button next to the hyperlink. So the hyperlink takes someone out to an external website, the internal link takes them somewhere else in your guide. So I could click internal link, 
And now I get to search the section that I want to send them to. So if I start typing in dining, I've got a subcategory called fine dining, and I could send them there. Hit add, and that's all that will happen. When they click that, it will take them through to that relevant place in the guide automatically. So it's a nice way of sending your guests to the relevant spots. Um, you can put dividers between things if you wanted to break stuff up. You can put emojis in there. So you could click the emoji. There's a ton of emojis. I mean, there's probably even a bear emoji. Yes, there is. So you could do bear like that, for example. Um, you can also, within your topic, add individual photos. So for example, if I wanted to um, add a photo of a bear here, I could put my cursor there where I wanted to add the photo, click the little image icon here. And that says to me, right, here are the images you've already got in your account. So I could choose one of those, or I could upload a new photo from my hard drive. So I'm actually just for now going to choose one of the images in the website. I'm gonna use this one here. When you've chosen your image, it puts a teal border around it to signify that's the one that's been chosen. I have now a choice to make that photo the full width of my topic or half the width, a quarter of the width, or even a tiny icon size, which is useful if you're, if you're putting Facebook icons or Instagram icons or your logo, for example. So I'm just gonna to choose to run with half the width and I hit submit and you can see it's put now, by the way, there's this drag option here. So if you wanted to see more of the page, you can drag it down. So now it's put that photo there for me. So let's say I was happy with that. I hit submit and you can see what it's done is it's added off street parking here with all the information inside it. So that's the process of adding a topic. And what I've got is three dots here to the right where I can delete what I've just done if I wanted to, which I am going to do, I'm going to delete that. Any questions so far coming in from either of them, Diana? So far, we don't have any questions. All right, if either of you do, don't be shy. Um, I'm aware that I'm telling you the generic one. Let's get uh, more specific to you if you would like. Um, <clears throat> okay, next up, I'm gonna show you how to add a Google place. So if I flip, Diana, did you wanna say something? Uh, yeah, there is some, there are some questions now. Uh, for example, this one, can you move a topic into a different category? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so um, I'm gonna refresh my page because this the site is being really, really laggy. And I don't know whether it's just because I've got a cached version of it on my page. So let me reload it. Uh, yes, so if I had, um, let's go here. So I've got driving directions and parking here. Let's say I didn't want those to be there, but I wanted them to be up in my welcome section. So what I can do is I can literally get the six dots, drag it up to here and drop it, and it's, and it's put it there for you. It looks like the site has speeded up actually, so it was just a refresh of the page that I needed. Um, yes, so you can do that. You can move stuff anywhere you want. And I have another one for Claire. Uh, mm -hmm. She says that um, there are a few things that uh, she wants to be on the content that are now in Google. Mm -hmm. How do you, how she can add that in the content? I guess she's referring to add descriptions on Google Places, maybe. Yeah, well, let, let me let me take you now to to Google Places. I know there's a few other questions, but let, let's go let's go and do Google Places because we'll answer that question by doing it. So. Um, this particular guide, we've actually created an activities guide, a food and drink guide, a wine regions guide, a visiting Cape Town guide. Your starter will say local area guide. You'll just have one category local area guide. And all this demonstrates to you is that you don't have to stick to that. You can delete the local area guide, come down here and add a new category. And in, that's what we did here. We added a new category. We called it activities. We added another one called it food and drink. You can build it up. So now that I've got my food and drink guide, and by the way, the reason we like, particularly when it comes to restaurants, to create a separate food and drink guide is it allows you in your list of subcategories here to specify the type of food and drink. Whereas if you had local area guide as your heading here, followed by restaurants, then you then list all of your restaurants underneath that one single heading and it's not great for the guest. Whereas if you split it like this, you can highlight fine dining, coffee and cake, ice cream as we've done here, or you could have Mexican, French, pizza, you know, whatever, you could do it that way too. So let's, let's go through the process of adding a restaurant. So if I have a restaurant that I want to add to this section, I could add that manually if I wanted to. 
So let's do that manually. So same process as when I added that topic earlier on. I click add topic. Um, I add my own topic. I give the restaurant a name. So let's call it Pizza Express. I could say something about it. This is a lovely pizza restaurant, et cetera, et cetera, whatever I want to say. Um, you know, please click to view their website. And then I could do that. And I could then say, call them on whatever the number was, right? Immediately you're seeing this is a little bit tedious and a little bit long-winded. So by all means, add your recommendations manually like that. But I would definitely suggest instead, add topic, click the Google Place option. A box pops up and says, just enter the location. So here I go, Pizza Express. So um, uh, Norton, I know you're in the UK, so you'll know Pizza Express is a big chain. Um, Maybe Claire, I can't remember, but I don't think you are. So this is to illustrate the point that when I've typed in Pizza Express, you can see there are lots of them and they're, they're trying to guess which one I want. And you can see it's powered by Google here. The problem is I don't want the one in London or in Woking. I want the one, let's say in Manchester. So all I have to do is just start typing Manchester and you see the list filters itself automatically. Then I see the one I want. So let's say the Oxford Street one is the one I want. I literally click on it. And I'm just going to highlight this and do a quick Google search to show you the information that we're pulling in for you. So over here on the right hand side, this is the Google place. So this is the information we're accessing. The photo, the name, obviously, the reviews, the hours of opening, the website, the phone number, we're putting a pin on the map. So all of that stuff that I attempted to do just now when I created a manual topic is done instantly for you. The only thing you have to do is to tell Touchday what kind of pin to put on the map. So there are about 70, 70 types of pins, knife and fork being in a restaurant, like I showed you on the map at the start of the call. So because there are 70, we've grouped them um, into sort of major categories. So eating and drinking, and then these are the list of eating and drinking options. This is clearly a restaurant, so I'm going to click restaurant. Touchday now knows to put a pin that's a knife and fork on the map. Um, I'm not going to cover tags right now because tags happen when you've got more than one property or indeed more than one vehicle, basically more than one guide in your account. I know you both have, but that's more than I want to cover on this demo. So when you add your second, you will be aware that you can start linking your content using tags. And I would definitely suggest you go into our knowledge base and you search for how to add another property or another guide. I'm going to show you that in a second, how you'd find that. But in a nutshell, tags simply say, OK, this restaurant, which guides do you want to send it to? A specific guide or all of your guides? That's really how it works. I'm going to send it to all of my guides by clicking at it. And then I hit save. And it drops it here. I can then move it wherever I want, as usual, with the, the drag and drop. Now, what that does, if I go and refresh my page, and I go to my food and drink guide and to my restaurants, there's my Pizza Express. So there's the, the photo, the address, the phone number, the reviews, the hours of opening, the map pin, and the website address. So you can see instantly I've done that very quickly. If I take you to the, the map uh, and we filter on restaurants, it's actually gonna zoom out to the entire world because it's a restaurant in Manchester, whereas this property is in, in Cape Town. But there you can see it, that's the one I just added. And if I click on it and read more, it takes me back into the guide where that one is listed. Now you'll see, if I scroll up, this one here, the meeting place, has got some text included. That is not Google's text. That's what you can add and supplement the Google entry with. So you can see yours starts without any text. All I have to do is if I want to supplement that, click on the one you just added, the heading. You've got a text box and you can just add whatever you want in there. Hit save. And I'm pleased to say the site is massively speeded up now. So if I go ahead and refresh my page, <clears throat> then if I scroll down, there's the text that I just added. So that's how you can supplement the information. So hopefully Claire, that explained what you had wanted to ask and more, but let me know if not. Um, there is something else that she's asking. It's about if she can access more than the stock Google pictures. The answer is no. The stock Google picture is the one that comes in. And I'm well aware that sometimes the Google photos are horrible. 
I, I don't understand why somebody who owns a Google listing would choose to put a horrific photo in here. This one's quite nice, but some of them are awful. So it's a great question. The options you have are to remove the photo like that. And then all that happens if I save that uh, and go back to my guest guide and refresh. <clears throat> All that happens is that entry now has no photo associated with it, which is not terrible. Like in my view, I think it's far more important to build a guide that has really helpful stuff in there. Like these are the great restaurants to go to. And I don't necessarily need to see a picture of it if you've told me what this place is. You could write in here what it is. So that's your, that's your first option to delete the photo. The second is you could add your own. So you can click add media upload a photo from your hard drive and it replaces the one that's there. So if I just chose that one for now and hit save. <clears throat> that's the one that's now added to Pizza Express. So that, that's your other option. Yeah, she mentioned that um, she had been using that, but she just wondering if she always need to download a separate picture and place a new one. Now, for each new Google place you added, if you didn't want the photo to be there, you would have to add a separate photo for each. Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't have like a generic pizza one and add the same photo to all of them. One of the things that I've seen is very nice, by the way, which I like the idea of. Let's just delete this topic for now. Um, one of the things that, that I've seen people do in their restaurants section here, what they do is they do list their restaurants without a photo. So they just become directory style listing. But what they do at the top of this list here is create a nice topic with a photo and say something about what's to follow. So if we go here and add our own topic, you could say, do you know what? In fact, before I do that, I might go and I think I know which guide it is. So let's go ahead um, to touchday.com forward slash example guides, which by the way, you can get from touchday.com on the demo here and click example guides. And that will take you down to this page. If we scroll down, we've got about nine or 10 guides from real customers. This one right here, I think they do what I was talking about. Um, and I'm going to cross my fingers. And if I don't find it, I'll show you what they did. But I think they do it in their hiking section. Uh, so maybe in the hiking here. Um, yeah, so look, hit, hit. ignore this one at the top. But they start with this one, personal hiking favorites. So they do include a nice photo of a hike. And here, they just give a quick snapshot of the hikes that they're about to recommend. And then as you go down, you see the individual hikes here. So here's the graveyard one, here's the bear wallow one, here's the chimneys. So you see, they don't have photos as they scroll, but they use that first one as the kind of the visual, the nice sort of visual start and a quick recap. So in my opinion, what I would do, if I, if, if I was building my own guide, this is what I would do. I would actually say our top, oops, why is this all in caps? Our top five, restaurant recommendations like this. And I would say below your find our top picks, um, you know, feel free to find your own, but these are the best in town, for example, like this. And then I would put um, a nice photo, perhaps of like the, the you know, street of the nearby town where there were some restaurants or, you know, whatever, a picture of, of uh, of food or something like that. And then I would have that. I would have that at the top. So I'd move it up to the top. And then you have that same thing that I just showed you on the past guide with the, with the hiking, where you introduce something. And then you could remove all the photos, um, Claire, so that you didn't have to have any of them there. And I think that would flow really nicely. Perfect. She's thanking you for that explanation, because this is actually what she was wanted to, to do with the Perfect. hiking section. Perfect. Excellent. I'm also aware, Norton, that we're talking really about um, that probably you're not recommending restaurants when your, your people are out on the camper van. So um, has Norton got any questions? Can we answer any of his? No questions from him? No. Nope, okay, any more from Claire? No, so far. Nope. Fine. All right, none so far. Good. Okay, so quick recap what we've covered. Um, we jumped into Content Hub here. I talked you through the, the structure. And if you remember, three level structure, category, subcategory, and then your topics. 
that's what it is here, category, subcategory, and topic. And you can add as many of each of those as you want. So category from the top button here, um, subcategory, you can add using the button here, and then topic to any subcategory here. And you can add as many as you want. If you don't like the ones that we start you off with, delete them. Um, top tip, if you do think you are going to use a topic that we've started you off with, but it's not that critical right now, you think you might want to do it later. For example, groceries and baby equipment. I can't remember whether we start you off with this, but let's say we do start you off with this and you're thinking, well, that's interesting, but it's not kind of mission critical now. I don't want to fill in everything. I just want to get this out and being used by my guests or my renters. You can hide these bits of information until you're ready. And hiding simply means they don't exist in the guide, but they remain here in your content hub. How do you do that? You simply turn this tag off. What you want is no tag here. And you get to the tag by clicking in your grocery options, going to the end and clicking on the tag that's active to turn it inactive. Inactive is a grayed out state instead of a solid bold state. Hit save. Grocery options is still there, but because there's no tag associated with it, it doesn't appear in any of your guides or indeed your first guide. So that's a nice way of keeping something there to save it for later, but you don't have the time or the bandwidth to do it right away. Let's turn that back on again. Um, we've shown you how to add Google Places. We've shown you how to move stuff around. We've shown you how to hyperlink things. So that's out to an external website. We've told you how to internally link from one section to another. What I appreciate is that this is a lot of information. There's a lot to kind of take on. And I know that you're, you're watching and you're thinking about how to, to um, interpret this into your own world. First of all, you will have this video recording. It will be on the, on the, the, the website somewhere, um, uh, I think. And if we don't, you can just let us know and we'll send it to you. Uh, but you've also got what we call the knowledge base. So I don't know if you've used this yet, but if I go back to the, to the main website, touchday.com, there's a magic button over here. And if I go to the left here to, to help and FAQs, that will load up our knowledge base. And as a rule of thumb, um, we, we generally hate knowledge bases because they're not very good. So we've made ours hopefully very good. We've tried very hard to make it good. So what you're doing here is you're typing in the keywords around the problem that you're trying to solve. So I just showed you how to add a Google place, for example. If you forgot, you can just type in Google here and it will have every article that mentions Google. So here, how to add a Google Place, and then it will take you step by step how to do it. I showed you earlier how to internally link. So if I just type in internal, how to create internal links to other sections in your guide, and it's going to walk you through that. Um, you know, uh, um, adding photo or photos. So you've got some articles there which talk about how you add a photo. So so on and so forth. So you'll find a lot of the information in there. If you don't find what you are looking for there and you want to get in touch with somebody, the best way, help and support up here, contact us, and then just put your subject line in your message. And the reason why I say that's the best way is that when you do that, the ticket that comes in will have who you are on it. And this, this one will actually go to Joe and Joe, Site. So if we go back to touchday.com, you'll see a question message us here. So you can fill in your name, your email, your subject. And this is the one that will come to Diana and she'll pick that up. So, um, sorry, Andy, there is one question from Norton. I don't know if you can answer that now. He wants mm -hmm. to know how we can, how he can share the, the guidebook with the guest. Um, if you can also explain about the invitation process. Definitely. Okay, good question. Um, and Diana, can you just make a note to remind me, I said I would show how to add a cover photo, how to change the colors and the logo, and also how to add a video, those things we need to cover. Um, okay, so the question is how to share it with guests. So you've got two options here. Uh, you can either send them what we call the quick share link. And the quick share link is the live link to your guidebook. It never changes, it's always the same. So think about it, think of it like touchday.com. That's the website. If I wanna send that to someone, that's what I send. And whatever information I add to touchday.com, whoever's got that 
website address, when they click on it, they'll see that latest information. It's the same concept with your guide. It has its own unique link. And every time you add new content to that, that link will have that new content. So if your guest has got it and you add something, when they refresh their page, they'll see that new stuff. So that's the quick share link. And the quick share link you get by going to your property, sorry, your guide, <clears throat> oh dear, we've slowed up again. Okay, invite and share. On the, on the invite and share page, you've got here right at the top, your quick share link. And that's it right there. So you can click the copy button here. It's copied and you can go and paste it into your existing emails that you send to guests. So if you've got a sequence of emails that you're sending after they've booked pre-arrival, go and pop that in one of the emails that you think is most relevant. We tend to suggest sending it to the guest three times. It might sound overkill, but I put myself in the guest's shoes. If I get the guidebook link the day after I've booked and I'm not staying until three months out, I'm probably going to ignore that. Uh, I probably won't remember it's there. So send it again two more times maybe once seven days prior, once 24 hours prior, that's the time I'm more likely to, to need it. And we always find that the customers that send the guest the link multiple times and often much closer to their stay, are the ones that get the most engagement, which also equals the fewer questions. And um, it's obvious really, isn't it? And, and guests we know when they go, when they step out the front door, their brain turns off, it goes to mush. I'm like that as well. We get into vacation brain, so we forget stuff. We need to be spoon fed. So that's what I would do. I would sequence those emails. If, you, if you're using a booking system that communicates automatically with your guests after a booking, then go into that booking system. They've all got um, an email section, a sequenced email section, and just put this guide book link in those emails or create a couple more emails to put the guidebook link in. So that's what the quick share link is. Now, if instead you don't wanna do it the way I've just described, but you want to use TouchStay's system to communicate this to the guests. So instead of your own email workflow or your booking systems email workflow, you could use TouchStay's. And that's this section here called invitations. So you can invite a guest by email, by SMS, or indeed you can create a unique link and um, um, send that to them. Now, the reason this one exists is people like to create a, a link that um, acts as like a quick share link. So they might create a link that's not to a specific guest, but that's to themselves. Um, but this one is tend to be less used. I would focus here and here. So all you do is you invite by email. You have to put in the email address of the guest that's staying with you. So I could do that. Um, Andy, notice the asterisks here. Those are the ones that are required. So I'm not required to put the last name in. So if you just want one less thing to do, that's what you do. What date am I checking in with you? So I'm gonna assume, let's go into May. I'm gonna be coming 7th of May. And I'm gonna be checking out on the 14th of May. Um, and then you get to configure the messages that you want to send. So you've got three messages. One um, that, that will go out here. The second one that will go out here. And the third one that goes here. You get to determine when you want to send those messages. And you get to determine that by setting it in your invitation settings. And I'll talk you through that in a second. My own invitation settings are set, invitation settings are set to send my emails in this following order. The first one immediately, the next one 10 days before arrival, and the final one three days before arrival. It's defaulted to that because I set that in my invitation settings. So you would do the same, whatever your settings might be. And then every, every single time you invite a guest, you won't have to, to, to choose that. It will be defaulted just like mine's defaulted. But if you did want to change it, so that you didn't want it to go immediately, you could say, actually send it 60 days prior, send this one 48 hours prior and send um, the, the, the first one, uh, where did I go? First one, sorry, first one immediately, second one, uh, seven days prior, and third one, uh, we're going to send 24 hours prior like that. So you can adjust it. And then you can fill in the, the language you want us to use when sending it to guests. So it's like they'll receive an email with whatever is written in here. Um, and then you send it. Now, the next time you go ahead and invite the guest, the, the message that you had created last time will be here and saved. So you won't need to retype that message. So that's how you do it using, using touch day. Here is your invitation settings that determines that sequence of first, second, and third. So that's where it says immediately 10 days, three days. You can just set those and then every single one you do will follow those, those same, same ones. Um, 
the invitation process, the, the one benefit the invitation process has over the quick share link is that the guest will cease to have access once they've checked out. So it'll be on, um, so if I was checking out on the 14th of May, on the 15th of May at midnight, I wouldn't be able to access the guide. It would just say to me, your link's expired. So some customers like that because they like the ability to have past guests no longer accessing their guide. Whereas the quick share link, think of it like sending a PDF or a word in the sense that they will have that information forever. Um, there's a little bit more to invitations that I can go into, which is where you can hide certain information. So the invitation process does allow you to say, don't show the um, driving directions until 24 hours prior, for example. That process I'm not going to cover now because again, that's a little bit more involved than we've got now, but it's called the, the, the limited and unlimited settings. So what we can do, just to demonstrate to you how you can find this, I go back to my knowledge base. In here, I could just type in invite actually. That's the better thing for you to remember. How to invite guests users to view your guide, click on it. It'll take you through the first one, the quick share link. It'll then take you through the invitation process and um, you have handy things like refer to this article for suggested templated wording to use, um, the invitation and reminder schedule explained, and then here, limited and unlimited access explained. So this is where it says to limit parts of your guide, you'll need to use the access level. So that's the bit that I was referring to that I'm not going to go into now, but you can go ahead and read that by following that article. Um, and if you've got questions, by all means, let us know. Okay. You're on mute, Diana, I think. Sorry, he has more questions. I don't know if we have time to, to answer to him. He said that if there is any way that we can, you can stop the link expiring if you invite a guest. Stop the link expiring? Yeah. Can you stop the link, the link expiring if you have invite a guest? Is there any way that he can do that? Yeah, well, if I think I've understood it, what you want is to be able to, to, to not send the quick share link, but to have individual records of guests here and not to have an expiry date on the link is I think what you're saying. You don't want it to ever end. You want the guest to be able to have it forever. If that's the case, invite by email yeah. here. What you can do, the check-in date might be, you know, uh, oops, what did I say, April the 9th, put the end date as 16th of April, but turn this into 2050, for example. In other words, that's just never going to expire. Um, so that's, that's the way you would do that. You, you're essentially, th this is not really your check-in and check-out date for your guest. It's, your, um, it's when you want the link to expire. That's essentially what this is. Okay, and the last question regarding this is, uh, can you set uh, a message with a number of day, days after they stay to promote feedback on social, uh, in social media? Um, not today, but <laughs> very, very, very soon. When I say very soon, we're anticipating releasing it by the end of next month. Um, it's actually going to overhaul this entire system here. It's going to be called Memo, so sneak peek for you. Um, and Memo will allow you to configure any number of messages that you want to go to your guests before, during, and after stay. And whereas here, you can only invite by email or SMS, with Memo, you can combine. Um, so you could create a workflow that you want every single guest to get, and it could it could consist of 10 different communications set at different times during their stay and a mix of email and SMS. And when you do that, yes, you can configure one of them to go 24 hours after they've left or on the day of departure saying, how was your stay? Here's a link to leave a review. He has another question, Andy. Um, can, can they change the, the link? of the, the name in the link, for example, adding the name of their company in the link no. and share that to the client? No, but it's a frequently asked question. And so we've created a knowledge base article for it. Um, so actually, I know we call it branded URL. So can I create a branded quick share custom link to my guide? The answer is, so look here, if you dislike the rather long and jumbled up quick share link, you might find the following helpful. So the first thing to say is that every single one of your quick share links has a QR code. So up here next to the quick share link, there's a QR code. So you can generate a QR code, put it in your, in your van or in your home um, on the kitchen counter or somewhere nice in the van, which gives the guests the option to scan the code to see the guide. So that's the first thing, in which case there the link would be, you know, they wouldn't ever see it in the first place. The other option 
is you can create a shortened URL. So Bitly, for example, or um, Google has a shortener. There's lots of shortening services. And those shortening services do have a branding option. It is a paid add-on from memory, but you could, you could then brand it. Finally, you do have a redirect URL option. So if you've got your own website, um, say touchday.com, for example, um, at the end of your website, you could put slash guide slash beach retreat and then get your tech person to redirect that link to the touch day one. Um, it's actually a very simple process. So if a tech person says oh, that's really hard, they're, they're lying. Um, but that, that's a nice way to give your guest a branded one. And when they click on it, it redirects to the guide. So that, those are our options. Branded URLs, custom URLs are on our wish list as well. But I'll be honest, they're, they're not right up there at the top. Uh, there is something I would like to add. I don't know if you mentioned that in the invitation process. We also have an article in our knowledge base with templates about how you can add those messages in the communication flow if they want to use it. Yeah, that's a good point. So I think it's called the share, share message template. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. Uh, maybe it's under templates now. Yeah, interesting. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, message template to use okay. when sharing with guests. So there you go. So what Diane is talking about there is here's some wording we've suggested. Is that what you meant, Diane? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So that, there's there's some example wording we use. We do actually also, by the way, on the templates, we've got some Canva designs, which allow you to put those QR code displays I mentioned on a pre-configured design. So for example, this is how it could look, or one like this, or one like this. And simply you drop the QR code in that spot or in that spot or in this one here. And you can just go ahead and, and download these um, by clicking on the, the links there and it will open it up in Canva and you can copy that, that template. Any other questions, Diana? Uh, let me see. Uh, no, so far I think we have covered everything. Um, okay. The only thing that we uh, want to talk about now is adding how to add new videos, how to add the cover picture, and changing the, the colors of. Okay, the perfect. So let's go to the cover photo. That's very easy. So that's the one in the background here on my guide. All you do is you click on your guide, and it's here at the top guide cover photos. You can change the photo by clicking edit desktop photo. By default, whatever you choose here will also be the photo that appears on the guest's mobile when they open it up on their mobile and their tablet. Um, by default, it uses the same one and nine times out of 10, that's absolutely fine. The reason why we separate them is in case you see it on your phone and you think, oh, that's, I want a different one for my phone, then you can add a different one. So that's the cover photo. Um, color scheme. So if you scroll down, here you have custom colors and fonts. So that allows you by clicking this button to choose a different font choice. Uh, by the way, up here, if you've already got another guide with the chosen font choice, you can just click it and say, copy it from that guide. Uh, but here you've got different font options. Don't have that many, but we've got a fair few. If there's one font that you're really wedded to that you don't see here, provided it's a free font or a Google font, we can add it. We are adding them from time to time, so just let us know. Two different types of fonts. I won't cover what they are, but there's a little help button up here, which you can click, and it will tell you what that's used for. Those little help things are everywhere, by the way, so they'll tell you what things mean. Um, here are your color choices. So here's the dark blue and the teal. So you simply click the down arrow. If you know the hex code, pop it in there. If you don't know the hex code, you just want to use the color picker. So maybe I wanted a slightly lighter blue color. I can just move my color over here. Once I've got the one I want, click OK. Same with the teal, either the hex code or I can adjust the main sort of color up here. Maybe I want some that's slightly darker yellow like this, for example, hit OK. You can check the box if you want to apply it to all of your guides. So if you've got more than one guide and you don't want to have to repeat this, check the box and it will apply it to both. If you just want it for this one, don't check the box, hit save and it will update that. Just a word on this thing here in the middle that I glossed past. This allows you to darken the background image of the, the cover photo. So this one right here in the background, because this whiting is, <laughs> writing is white, if you've got a very light photo, like I can imagine, Claire, maybe you've got a beach place and you've got a picture of the sand maybe in the background, sometimes the white writing can disappear. So you can, you can make the background photo a little darker. That's all this overlay does. So zero is the original photo, 100% would turn it into solid black. So we find that somewhere between 20, 30, 40% gives the required contrast. Um, what else did I have to do? Uh, adding videos. Adding videos. Oh, logo as well. 
Did I say that? Yeah. Yeah. So let's stay here with the logo. So up at the top, account. Given that you've both got more than one guide in your account, I would suggest controlling your logo up here. You can control your logo in your individual guides, but if you do it in your individual guides, you're having to add it in multiple times. So um, up here on the edit profile, um, here's my photo of, of, of Jane. I can change that to my business logo here by clicking upload logo. You can also have the logo appear in original format or with a circular border around it, like the one you see here has a circular border around it. Uh, it won't put a circle border around something that's rectangle. So anyway, if you've got a square photo, it will give you the, the circle option. Um, and to the right here, you've got what we call the account icon slash favicon. So do you see at the top of the screen here in my tab, I've got this one here, that's the favicon. If um, the guest adds the app to their phone's home screen, when you send them the link, we haven't covered this and I don't intend to now, but when you send them the link, they'll get a little pop-up on their phone that says, would they like to add it to the home screen of the phone? If they choose to, It'll add an app just like any other app, but this will be the logo that goes inside it. So you can brand it that way. So if you do that at this, pro, at this account profile level, it will apply automatically to all of your guides. Um, videos, right? So let's go to um, the arrival information. If you wanted to add a video to explain how the front door keypad works, then scroll down to the media section here. Um, in this case, I'm clicking change media, but if there was no photo here, you would just have an add media button. Um, from here, if you're wanting to use video, it's this one to the right, new photo slash video from URL. You click it and it asks you here to insert the URL. So we support videos that are on YouTube, Vimeo or Wistia. One of those three platforms, you can't add videos directly to TouchDay, we don't host them. But if you put them on one of those three platforms, YouTube, Vimeo, or Wistia, each of them has their own share link. You know, it's the little link underneath the video on, on YouTube, for example. Pop that in there and hit submit, and it will look like, if we go to the Asheville Hillside Hideaway, I know they've got exactly that in their arrival section here. There we go. So then I can play that directly in the guide. It plays how to operate the keypad. So that's how that works. And by the way, just to give you a bit more inspiration, they've also got one for their hot tub. So how to operate the hot tub. He's been very funny about it. I quite like the way he does it. But you could just point your, your, your camera at the keypad on the hot tub. You know, it could be, could be simple. It doesn't have to be as entertaining as that. Okay. How are we doing for questions, Diana? Any else? Uh, yeah, Emma. Uh, she just wanted to know if we are going to cover a second guide this time. Um, uh, we are we are not. Emma, welcome. I hadn't realized you had joined as well. Um, we're not going to create, cover creating a second guide, but we have got five minutes left. So, Diana, if there aren't any other questions, I'll do a quick overview of that for Emma's benefit. Uh, no, there, there are no more questions. We've covered okay. everything. Yeah. Cool. So what happens is um, if I go to my guides page and I want to add, I've got two in here already, but let's say I wanted to add a third one, or if I had one in here and I wanted to add a second one, add guide button up here, give it a name whatever the name is, the address, et cetera. Um, hit next, upload a cover photo. So once again, the cover photo is this one in the background. You don't have to immediately. This is not an obligatory one, but you may as well, if you're here, upload it. Um, and when you have more than one guide in your account, you get into tags. And I did say I wouldn't cover tags and I'm not going to cover tags. I'm going to point you to the article that explains tags, which I said I would do. Um, instead, I, what I said I would do is I would point you to the article that talks about how to add your second guide. So I think we call it multiple, I think is the, the title of the, the article, multiple. Adding, uh, let's not do that one. Um, adding a new guide with a single template, this one right here. I would suggest you watch that. That's going to talk you through how to add your second one. In fact, all three of you would benefit from this because when you add your, you've all got more than one. Um, and what this does is it walks you through it. This one where it's got a single template, this means if all of your properties are going to be, or all of your camper vans are going to be very similar, like you want them all to follow broadly the same structure, they've got most of the same content. For homes, they're all in the same area. This is the one you want with a single template. If you've got homes that are like ones in Orlando, ones in Miami, ones in New York, you don't want the single template one, you want the multiple template one. So you would go back here um, and you would type in multiple, adding a new guide with multiple templates. And that's when it will talk you through how to do that. That's what I would suggest you do. And that will cover what tags is. In short though, tags is dead simple. It simply says, 
any content that I add to Content Hub, I want to be sent to different guides. That's all a tag is. It just links it to, to your different guides. All of you will have an all guides tag. And by activating all guides, that will mean that the guide you're now adding will start off identical to the one you had started with. That's all that will happen. It'll make an exact copy of it from which you can then start changing things. That's where I recommend you watch the video. Um, you get to choose the custom colors and fonts from a different guide, so you don't have to repeat yourself. And then you hit create guide and it'll be done. And what I am going to do is I'm going to click on the, the preview guide button once this has done its thing to show you how the guide I've just created is identical to the other ones in terms of content. So here it is. If I click preview guide, it'll actually have a dummy photo on the front because I didn't, I didn't add the cover photo. So it'll put our stock lake one, but look how it's got the logo up here, the name, the phone number, and the email. They've all been added automatically for you. The color schemes automatically added for you. When I hit get started, everything here is identical to the first one you created. And that's because you tagged it with all guides. That's what happened. Uh, Touch Day went in and it added it to, it added all your content to that same guide. So that, that's the process. Definitely go and watch those videos before you start doing that. And if you have any questions about it and it's not clear, we could probably think about another demo later in the series where we cover that. Anything else, Diana, that's coming? Uh Nothing else, just say sorry to Emma that we didn't see her in the beginning because she, she was from the beginning of the webinar, so. Yeah, sorry. no worries, Emma. Yeah, I mean, there's any, there's any few of you on here. Uh, we've had a, um, a very personalized demo this time around. So, well, that, that's it, everyone. So we've, we've, we've covered a lot in an hour. Um, hopefully you found it useful. Um, if you could let me know in the chat whether you did find it useful or not, because this is the first one we've done. And being candid, we're thinking, is there value in continuing to do these? So if there is, just say yes. That means we, we're incentivized to keep doing them. Um, if there's things that you thought we didn't cover that you would like to have seen, do that as well. Um, certainly drop um, either of us an email, andy at touchday.com or diana at touchday.com. If there's anything you want us to, to remind you of after the call or any feedback you've got, we definitely appreciate it. Uh, as much as we're here as the product experts, we actually like to get feedback in terms of what we're delivering. So, so feel free to let us know anytime. And with that said, I am going to bid you all farewell. Um, good luck with creating your guides. And if you need anything, let us know. <laughs>